Thank you. I'm going to start today in Genesis. Genesis chapter 6. You have to choose to hold on to your belief in the scriptures and in, the, in our Savior. And we living in the enemy's territory. So each day is getting difficult, more and more difficult to stand in faith because everything around us is moving us away from that. There's a spiritual force at work in the earth and it's a strong force. But our God is stronger than that force. So that's why it's so important for us to walk by faith and confidence in the scriptures and not be moved by what we see. And I, and I know I say this often because my heart desire is to continue to keep you focused and grounded and rooted in the things of God. Because the more research, the more knowledge, the more things you see taking place in the earth, the more challenging it is to stay grounded and rooted in the things of God. Because the enemy is the God of this world. So he's controlling it all of the systems in this world and everything that we have anything to do with is mostly con controlled by our enemy. So that's why it's important for us to have faith and not be tossed to and fro by every wind or doctrine. But the only way that can happen is you have to stay in the word and you have to stay prayerful. Prayer is so mightily important. But today I want to pick up a little bit from where I left off last week to revisit some of the things I talked to you about last week because we talked, we mentioned Harvey and now there's another storm called Irma and we understand that there's a cosmic battle going on but there's also a weather battle going on because they're using weapon, weather as a weapon, okay? And there's proof to this and so when I ask you to look things up, you know, when I recommend you to look things up it'll be in your best interest to look those things up because if you don't you'll just walk out of here and your life will just be the same as everybody else's and it'll be more difficult for you to resist the darkness that's coming on the earth you'll just get swallowed up into it okay am i making sense and genesis 6 this is talking about the flood and i want to pick the story up at verse 11 it says the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence that's the same thing we see taking place the earth is corrupt right now and it's filled with with violence and God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth and God said unto Noah the end of all flesh is come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold I will destroy them with the earth so the earth was going to be destroyed and God told Noah he was going to do it look at verse 1 of chapter 7 it says and the Lord said unto Noah come thou and all thy house into the ark for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Drop down to verse 4. For yet seven days. First God is telling Noah to come into the ark. Now he's telling him. Within the seven days. I will cause it to rain. And upon the earth for forty days. And forty nights. And every living substance that I have made. That I have made. Will I destroy. From off the face of the earth. So God was communicating with Noah because he found that Noah was righteous and also that Noah's genealogy wasn't corrupt. So what the enemies can the enemies was around at this time because this is after the Garden of Eden. And we read in the Garden of Eden where the enemy spoke to Adam and Eve and deceived them and caused them to rebel against God and sin. So the same enemy is still around and so what he's doing is trying to to, to use God's words and his wisdom to cause humanity to rebel against God. So he has humanity now on his side rebelling against God. Am I making sense? I'm trying to set a standard here. Turn to um, 
Matthew 24, because in Matthew 24, it talks about what the people were actually doing before the flood. Jesus is speaking. Matthew 24. Let's look at verse 38. It says, For as in the days that were before the flood, you see, this is the, so this scripture, Jesus is speaking and he's telling us what was happening in the days before the flood. They were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noe or Noah entered into the ark. And underline, and knew not. They didn't know anything. They were going on about their lives, and they didn't know anything. But no one knew the flood was coming, okay? Until the flood came and took them all away. I actually have shown you all a, a chart where, in the names of the genealogy of Noah's family, they knew that the flood was coming based on the name. Methuselah said, I think if, if I'm not mistaken, it says Methuselah's name means when he dies, the flood is going to come or destruction is going to come. So they knew, but they didn't believe. And that's the point I'm trying to make today. Okay. And verse 39 again. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So when Jesus comes back, people are going to be eating and drinking and marrying until destruction come and then take everybody away. And they're not paying attention to any warnings or any sound doctrine. They're just going after their own lust. Am I making sense so far? So let me give you another witness. Let's go back to Genesis 19 because the same thing happened with Lot. Genesis 19. This is the story where God was delivering Lot from the destruction that was coming on Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at verse 12. Genesis 19, verse 12. It says, And the men said unto Lot, These are the angels speaking to Lot. They look like men. Okay? It says, They said unto Lot, Has thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. So see, the people of God, they get a warning. The people who's connected to God. Because the, the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. Father God. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-law. They didn't pay him any attention. They didn't believe that he was telling the truth. Now, for over a year, I shared with you to look up this man whose name I told you about him last week, Dan Winnington. He has a website called geoengineer.geowatch.org. It's geo. <laughs> look up geowatch.org. If you look, if you put his name in Google, his website will come up because it's, it's he's all over the internet. Actually, yesterday, um, my husband and I were in the car and we were listening to the radio, and there was a commercial that came on that was trying to debunk that terraforming and geoengineering was taking place. So that means that what Dan Wingington is doing is, is, is having an effect. He's trying to wake people up, okay? I want to give you all a chart. I've given it to you before, some years ago, but I'm going to give it to you again. This chart is the cycle of nations. 
Okay, I want everybody to get a really good look at it. It's going um, clockwise. First, God, you have peace and prosperity. And then the people go in. Let me give you the definition of both um, apathy and paganism. Apathy means the lack of interest, enthusiasm, suppression of passion, emotion, or excitement. That's the first definition. The second definition is lack of interest in or concern for things that others find moving. And the definition for paganism, this is real interesting, a religion other than one of the main world religion, specifically a non-Christian or pre-Christian religion. Second definition, a modern religious movement, a modern religious movement incorporating beliefs or practices from outside the main world religions especially I'm gonna read it again nature worship a modern religious movement incorporating Beliefs or practices from outside the main world religions, especially nature worship. So, God blesses people, and you can read. I, I would also encourage you to read the book of Judges because the book of Judges is a really good example of what we are talking about today, where God blessed the people, and then as soon as He blessed the people, they do what we're reading here. So, the next move is apathy and compromise. So, we've seen that we have gotten as a world people who don't, especially in America. We don't know and we don't care about what's happening to the other peoples of the world. Most of the peoples of the world are starving and they're living in deplorable conditions. And I've been looking at documentaries from some of the people who are in the storm and they're reporting that the Red Cross is not helping them and that the, um, they're putting things on the news that's not true and that they're leaving people, especially of color, on the rooftop and they're not rescuing them. And it's a whole lot of things that is happening to people, even in our country, that is not being reported. Okay, and it's even worse. There's typhoons and earthquakes and, and all types of storms that have hit other parts of the world, but it's not being reported on the news, our news, because they're telling you about a dog who was rescued or a man who's being put here in Massachusetts in jail for being homeless and left his car, his dog in the car. So they're putting him in jail. He didn't have a place to stay or the dog. You know, these are the types of things that they're putting on the news as opposed to people who is really starving and suffering from and, and Yemen. They say the people have typhoid fever and all different kinds of famine and diseases uh, hitting human beings who is God's creation. And we don't care. We, we are in a state of apathy. And now we've passed apathy and compromise to the point where we're in rebellion against God. And we were practicing in the church even paganism. I heard a church next door to my house playing, practicing for their church service and the music that they were playing sounded like they were in a nightclub. Which is what I told you yes last week is that the people go to church to be entertained and to have see a concert be presented to them. It's not about Jesus. It's not about God. It's not about holiness. We are already way past the point of compromise and apathy, and we are in the latter part of rebellion and paganism. And next 
on this chart is famine and plagues. You see it? And after we get into that, then that's when people start, start crying out to God because now everybody is dying. You're enslaved. We already enslaved in slavery because they're taxing us illegally in this country and all over the world. Okay? I'm saying this because when you look at what happened with Noah, Noah was warning the people in the names of the people who lived in that time. They understood that something was going to happen, but they kept on doing what they wanted to do. They didn't pay the warnings any attention. The same thing happened in Lot. Lot's son-in-law didn't even believe Lot when he told him that an angel is here to rescue us. Supernatural things are taking place in the world and natural things are taking place in the world and nobody is paying attention. And I've been telling people for a while that something is wrong. You can't grow plants. This man, Dan Wingington, is a geoengineer. And he was stating on his site that he planted 300 trees and none of them survived. And I'm sure that he's been doing planting and things long enough to know what to do to make them survive. And so when you look at these leaves, these are the leaves in my backyard. I'm bringing them because I'm trying to sound an alarm and wake people up that you need to get right with God. And you need to share this information with as many people as possible to let people know this is really happening. They are spraying on us. The same thing is happening to these leaves. It's happening to human beings. Okay? This is what a leaf looked like to going into fall. Instead of turning yellow and orange and gold, this is black. Like some type of chemical, something that burned the leaves was sprayed on them. All of the leaves in my backyard, the trees, the leaves are falling off the trees prematurely and turning black like this. Okay? And nothing grows, no matter how much water, how much fertilizer. I'm not a nature lover. I'm just saying we need green trees. We need food to be able to survive as human beings. All of the predictive movies that shows the future shows the earth with no trees, just desolate. Everything black and white. No greenery, nothing. No food, just death. And that's what the enemy, the God of this world, is doing. And those people who are worshiping Satan, they're carrying out his agenda, believing that life is going to be different from them. But those of them who are human, the same thing that's going to happen to us is going to happen to them. Our flesh is going to die. But our spirit and our souls, if we are in the right place with God, is going to live on. We are living in some difficult times, dark days. You better make sure your soul and your spirit is right. I'm sounding an alarm. Just like Noah sounded an alarm. Just like Lot talked to his, his relatives and they didn't pay him any attention. People are not paying any attention right now to what is going on around them. Because they don't care. They are operating from a state and a perspective of apathy. Am I making sense to you? We don't want to be like those people. And they're going after other gods. I'm going to show you that again in Deuteronomy, which is what the paganism is. Geoengineering Watch is the name of the, is the, name of the site. Geoengineeringwatch.org Please look that site up. That man says he has over 2,000 videos and articles. If you want credible evidence that you can... You can refer other people to look at. He's desperately trying to sound an alarm and telling people we almost at a state of no return of being able to save the planet because of the chemtrails and the terraforming that they're doing and the weather war um, Irma and Harvey is, is, is stated by him and he got the videos to show it because he has attorneys and a whole group of people who is trying to sound an alarm against the vaccination and against the chemtrails and proving what it is that is being done. So I'm trying to point everybody who hears me to go and look him up because I found him because I saw in my own garden something huge was wrong over a year ago. Okay? And Genesis, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 6. 
And this is where we are in trouble right here in verse 14. It says, God speaking to the people, his people, you shall not go after other gods. That's what paganism is. Of all the gods of the people which are round about you. So there's other gods, fallen angels, that are deceiving people into worshiping them over the creator God. When I was a little girl, the creator God was honored and esteemed and revered and looked up to. Even the people who were missing the mark knew that there was a God. But now the spiritual forces that work to cause people to believe everybody is a God. And you can do whatever you want to do. You have the freedom to do whatever you want to do. You can have fluid genders. You can be a man today and a lady tomorrow. How foolish it is for people to believe that. You have the equipment to let you know when you come into this world who God wanted you to be and what God wanted you to be. Because he's your creator. All right? People are using science to change God's ways. Turn to Deuteronomy 7. And this is another example of what people of God are doing today. They have no clue, no, 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 no honor of these words. They don't mean anything to people. It says in verse 3, Neither shall thou make marriages with the people who worshiping the other gods wrong about you. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me. That's what's happening. You see. That they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you. And destroy thee suddenly. You see it? Turn to Psalms. I mean, there's, so, there's over 244 mentions of little gods in the scriptures. Psalms 95. People don't think that this is going to happen. People don't see the book as the Bible as being a historical book that's given us information and also as a doctrine to teach us how to be holy and how to be righteous. So we do whatever we want to do. And I think it has to be a blind person not to see something evil is in control of our whole world right now. And we all need to be on our knees praying and worshiping God and seeking God and making sure that we are where we need to be, that we are not being deceived or deluded or outwitted by evil. Because you can think you okay with God and not be. Okay? Psalms 93. I'm sorry, 95.3. It says, for the Lord is a, for the Lord, you see all the letters are capital law, capitalized, it's talking about the creator God, it is a great God and a great king above all gods, little g, fallen angels. Look at 96, chapter 96, verse 5. It says, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. So he's acknowledging that there's fallen angels. Turn to Acts. Is this making sense? Acts 19. Acts 19. And this is really, this, this is how we should be. How Paul was. Not allow the people around us to influence us and control us to move away from God. Because there's a strong movement right now, spiritually speaking, to move people, to undermine the name Jesus. To move us away from believing even in the scriptures. Okay. Verse 26. It says moreover. You see and hear. That not alone at Ephesus. But almost throughout all Asia. This Paul 
has persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. You see, Paul was his commitment to Christ. His zeal for Christ, to listen to Christ, to honor Christ, and to live holy, and to turn away from who he used to be, was able to persuade many people away from serving little gods. But now what's happened, that's what the gospel is meant to do. That's what Jesus came for. The Son of the Most High God came to, to rescue us, to become our Savior, to be the payment of our sins. To move us away from believing in fallen angels, God, fallen angel gods, but to believe in the only true and living God. There's only one God. Am I making sense to you? Turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. The Bible is acknowledging that they are fallen angels. But we are not supposed to go after their doctrines and bow down and worship them, which is what paganism is. When you look at what's going on in the church, the way what people are doing, it's really appalling. It's, it's horrible. In verse 1 it says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but charity or love edifies or builds up. And if any man think that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. That's where we are too. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. And as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto, Id unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other than God but one you see for though there be that are called gods whether in heaven or in earth as there be many gods many and lords many but to us who are the people of God there is but one God the father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and by we, we by him. There's only one God and one Lord, that's father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that clear? That's why I brought you, I wanted you to see that. Now turn to Galatians. I try to give you a lot of scriptures. And I try to make what we see taking place in the news and in the world, and the news that we do get, that is partially true, <laughs> relevant to the scriptures. In Galatians chapter 4, look at verse 8. And this is, this is something we need to take serious. It says, How be it then when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature were are no gods. But now after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements where until you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days, months, times, and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. So what he's describing there is witchcraft, paganism, idolatry. We don't need to turn to those things. We need to stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. Am I making sense to you? Turn to Jude. Jude is only one chapter. It's before the Johns. Okay. 
I'm sorry, after the Johns. The first, second, and third John. Look at verse 1. It says, Jude, who is the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified, set apart by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. So we are set apart, sanctified by God the Father, and we are preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So we got people right now, that's what's taking place. That They are denying the Father of creation and His Son. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. That's what's going on. People who don't believe. They're not listening. They don't care to look. They're operating in a state of apathy and compromise and rebellion and paganism. And the angels which kept not their first estate, the fallen angels, but left their own habitation. He has reserved. He, God the Father, has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. CERN is trying to open up the prison to let these fallen angels out. People are practicing witchcraft, idolatry, and paganism. And they're conjuring up demon spirits. And they're sending them out against people. These all things are happening that the Bible told us would be taking place. Am I making sense to you? They're saying the Vatican is training more people to perform exorcism. Exorcism is not deliverance. And how can Beelzebub cast out Beelzebub? Okay? Pay attention. Look at Luke. Luke chapter 18. Just, this is Jesus speaking. Talking about the lady who kept going to the unrighteous judge looking to be avenged. And Jesus says in verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. Isn't that a profound statement for our Savior to make? Because he knows everything. This is really something. Because now more than any time in my lifetime, it's important for you to fight and contend for your faith. Because everything that you are presented with day by day is eroding people's faith. People are struggling. People are being isolated. People are dealing with evil spirits coming against them day and night. And when you have evil coming against you day and night, whatever way it comes against you, it can make you think that there is no God that you have been forsaken or that you're not saved. That's why you need faith. And I'm going to keep saying this week after week as long as the Holy Spirit leads me to say this because it's impossible to please the Lord without faith. And him who comes to the Lord, you first got to believe that he, is, that he is and that he is a reward of them who diligently seeking him. If you're diligent about seeking the Lord, it's more difficult for the enemy to captivate your faith. 
Am I making sense? Turn to First Peter. Make sure you don't allow the enemy to move you away from faith and, and, and God who created us. We did not evolve from a big bang. I saw a cartoon that was showing animals and it was meant to teach little children, babies about animals. And it was showing all kinds of animals and it had an infant baby and it said babies grow up to become monkeys. Infant grows up to become monkeys. And if I wasn't sitting there, which was what people do, working parents are tired. At the end of the day, they set their children in front of an animation thinking that it's educational. And they're not paying attention to how it's indoctrinating your children into evolution. And as if, if a little child is, is taught that from a baby, how are you going to be able to change that mind when it get to be a grown up or a teenager? And because all that's ever known was, I grew up to be a monkey. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a trap. It's, it's, it's trickery, witchcraft, indoctrination into everything away from God. First Peter chapter 4. Look at verse 1. It says, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, underline, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking, speaking evil of you. People are going to speak evil of you. If you don't do the same things that they are doing in this world. Who shall give account? They're going to give account to God that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. For this cause, like Paul stated in Acts 19, was the gospel preached also to them that are dead and they, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Because when Jesus was, was there for those three days, it says that he went and preached to those who was in the paradise side of hell. So that those who died righteous before the cross had the opportunity to be set free and go to heaven with Christ. As well as those who are alive that believe when you die in the physical you, the spiritual you will spend eternity with Christ. So don't live worshiping pagan gods, worshiping and practicing idolatry and witchcraft, going after other little G gods. But make sure you are in the right place with God. It's important to examine yourselves to make sure that you are in the faith that God has established for us to make, be made right with him by. Am I making sense to you today? God is real, and I know it's a challenge to stay committed and faithful in the spiritual climate that we are living in. Even when you try to study and do research, everything is promoting to move people away from the Bible, away from the Creator God, and all things that are evil and paganism. Paganism is a movement. I thought that was interesting that in the definition itself, it said that paganism is a religious movement. And you can see it is a movement in every aspect of our lives to move us away from our creator. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the spoken word today.
And we pray that you would move on our hearts, that you would teach us by the Holy Spirit of the living God that we would not be deluded or deceived and that we would become lovers of the truth, Lord God. Teach us the truth, we pray in your son's name. Amen.